Hi everyone, it's Jose Luis Garcia again with the MCC Live 2 virtual programming. This is video number two of a four part series on book arts and bookmaking. If you haven't seen the first video, I encourage you to check it out to learn a little bit about our accordion uh, fold book, which is actually a really great basis that you can add on to any of the book arts projects, both in video two and in the future in videos three and four. So a little bit about today's projects. You can see next to me a new assortment of books. Again, in the same spirit of video one, the decisions are on you. All we need today is a sheet of paper and we'll do a bit of cutting. So a scissor or tearing with your hands can be good too. We can see again, assortments of styles of books. Today, what we're gonna be doing is we're going to make a small book that will have in kind of traditional sense, right? Different pages you can work on. And you'll have a front and back cover. What's really interesting about this style of book is that you're actually constructing it with just one single sheet of paper. This is on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, like our kind of basic line paper or computer paper. And with one small cut towards the center and a steps of a series of steps of folds, you can create a book out of any paper. You can work both on kind of blank traditional style of books. You can also use black paper and try writing with either white out or white color pencil. It's really nice when you kind of invert colors or have very little colors to work on. You can also create it on pattern paper and use some collaging almost to create like a little photo album. I think using um, colored papers or construction papers is a really nice way to add some color uh, so that you're not just working on a blank sheet. You can also tell that depending on how you fold, you can either end up with a really narrow book, kind of like this one, or a square book like the ones we saw before. This project kind of started off um, when I was thinking about book arts and when I learned it in school, uh, primarily learning from Professor Todaro at New World School of the Arts. Carol Todaro is an amazing book art, um, book artist, really, and um, conceptual artist who works with a ton of different uh, materials in her insta art installations, but really book arts and book forms are at the core of it. So I always um, look back and kind of think fondly on Professor Todaro's class. And this book was actually created then. So it's looking at the same style of book that we just saw, but I'm using more kind of abstract or formal uh, kind of storytelling. So instead of drawing people, places, or things, this time I decided to just create these lines that almost look like kind of torn pieces of paper or mountains, or almost like, I see them as kind of like, kind of timelines, kind of intersecting, coming together at some moments. And in the same spirit, it all kind of connects from one sheet of paper. So in order to create one that's this size, I actually had to use a bit of a larger sheet of paper. But what's really cool is you can actually create something on each individual page spread or create one big drawing or painting as your composition. And then again, with this kind of folding technique, you can see it in a whole new form. Kind of like our accordion book in video one, these are really cool because they actually stand up. And since they have this kind of double side to them, you see over here, means you can use materials that might bleed through to the other side. So like Sharpies and markers, that is sometimes a concern with um, your book arts projects or thin paper projects, aren't really a problem with this particular book form because it's layered by two different sides. I want you to really keep or think about the book arts um, form as being something that you can explore storytelling kind of narratives and sequences, you know, beginning, middle, and end, the same way you would in language arts or in a story that you're reading. Uh, in our case, we're gonna kind of create some grids or blocks that will either be little like windows or mirrors that can kind of tell us something about your story. You also use a little bit of handwriting and any grammatical skills, any writing skills that you might be learning in school uh, to create the story. Remember, you can always tell the story both um, kind of through text, through words and writing, but you can also tell the story through pictures. 
another way to kind of create a comic book style page or comic strip is by just creating some diagonal lines, really cutting up or segmenting the page into some different little cubes for you to explore. Always think of the environments that you're at. Where is the story taking place? You might want to draw in one square the sun or the moon to let us know the kind of time of day. What about in the other one? You actually write in and tell us it was a starry night. Then towards the center, we see a whole scene and there's a picnic in the moonlight. You can already see how your mind might be filling in these blank spots in my book of all the stories that could be. So it's really great for you to start to brainstorm and maybe there's something that I'm suggesting in these videos that really sparks your creativity. Another element that you want to keep in mind in your comic or uh, comic style artist book is dialogue and text. How are you going to add this text? Are you simply going to add it in one of the kind of boxes we saw before? Or are we going to use kind of air bubbles to kind of let us know what this kind of text or what these writings are supposed to be interpreted as? You know, maybe if someone's talking, I'll just create a simple talk bubble, kind of like this one, circular. Maybe if someone's thinking or saying something swiftly, I'll create more of this kind of quick cloud, like if someone's running through. This more geometric kind of very 90 degree angle style of rectangles and lightning bolts makes me think of computers and cell phones. So perhaps this would be my kind of cell phone telling me the battery's low. In our case, our battery's fully charged with ideas today. And then this last one is a big thought bubble using these kind of little clouds, almost like if really when we're brainstorming, we're creating this big thought bubble right above our head of all the possibilities that can take place for not only our projects, but our lives. Whatever you decide to put on your pages or on your book is up to you. But I do recommend using a larger size book so that you can have a good amount of area to work with. You can tell how this page, which I'll open at the very end, gives you so much more to work with than maybe these smaller books. But in the same token, the smaller books you can finish and create a whole series within a day. Maybe there's five different versions. And don't forget your front cover. You can create something really abstract or really graphic. Think of the spirit of comic books, kind of like action superheroes, and the words pow, kazam, zap. Maybe you channel it in the kind of lines that you use. If you notice, I didn't use much writing in mind. I just let these kind of forms, like these cloudy or kind of shocking shapes, be what uh, kind of create a coloring book page for us to work on after. So this book is really simple and it's in the tradition of zines, kind of handmade, quick uh, books using very little materials. Sometimes zine makers will use just these fold books that we just saw or they'll use just simple kind of staple um, style books. The idea is they're quick, they're immediate and they're meant to be given to people. So perhaps your comic book that you write and make today can be a gift to someone of upcoming birthday or the holidays or just because I think the best way to spark creativity within yourself and your kind of community is by taking these steps to really to gift each other with the art of joy so I'm gonna go ahead and let you know what the materials for today are gonna be we're gonna start off just like last time with a sheet of paper but you do want to keep in mind that again small papers like the one I'm holding right now isn't really going to cut it. It's going to make a tiny book. It's going to be about a fourth, a quarter, if you're learning kind of fractions. So you want a big enough sheet of paper. I would actually advise on an 11 by 14 minimum, maybe even something like 18 by 24 if you have. So this is actually a really pretty big sheet of paper, but when it gets folded down through all the steps, we can see that it becomes a nice handheld, almost like notebook or journal. But again, it's up to you. You might want to use colored sheets of paper. The smaller books are used with regular eight and a half by 11 computer sheets of paper, or construction paper. So you can always use a smaller scale too. My personal favorite is an 11 by 14 for this style book. Uh, I also recommend doing some pre-cut drawings. You might want to also use some collage, maybe by drawing out some different symbols. So this is if I was to design a house using different kind of doors, also having some nature like trees. And so thinking of not just drawing out all of your materials, but something that later on with a, 
with the help of a safety scissor, you could come into and cut out and have some more, again, collage material to work with. You can also do the same with your cloud bubbles. Maybe you draw everything first in pen and then you have the pop of color come from a collage uh, cloud. Again, that's optional in case you have them. We want to remember that the spirit of our videos and of these projects is that we don't need much to spark our creativity and to start really making some important artwork. So even if you have just a sheet of paper, that's all you need. If you have any of the other materials I mentioned, those are only perks and only the beginning. Again, if you want to use something like paint, make sure you're using a thicker paper, like a watercolor paper, or even cardboard that you might be recycling. If not, any basic drawing material will work just fine, even on thin computer paper. You should be able to use markers and Sharpies. In a few seconds, I'm gonna put up all of the list of materials in the event that you have some of them and wanna take a minute to retrieve them. For our single page book, we're gonna to wanna to start off with one sheet of paper. Right here, I'm showing you some guidelines in my demonstration of all the different folds we'll be making. The lines with some dashes are fold, while this highlighted line in the center is actually the only cut we will make. So we can start off by just folding our page in half. Remember, each time we're folding, we wanna line up the corners so that we can get a nice, even fold. You can also pass various times with your hand, your finger, or the backside of a pencil or marker to really crease and get a nice sharp edge. Once I go ahead and fold that, I'm gonna unfold it. So you should right now have a nice fold running across your book. The next one we're gonna do is, we're gonna actually fold it in half in the opposite direction. So now we're gonna go the long way, horizontally. Same, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna match that up. And now we're gonna have this crease over here vertically. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this part in half as well. So I'm folding right over here. And now I can flip it over and I'm gonna fold this last page here on my left, matching the corners to the fold on the right. Again, pressing down, you wanna really reaffirm those folds. It'll help you. So once you go ahead and you lay your book flat, or your page flat, it's not quite a book yet, you can go ahead and you can highlight with a marker, pen, pencil, this line over here. So this first fold, when it intersects all three, one over here, two over here, three over here, you can mark a small, a small X. Over on the opposite side, you'll do the same, where this fold over here intersects with this fold over here, you can make an X. You might be wondering, how are we going to cut it? Go ahead and just fold this in half. And then with that marker line guiding you, you can go ahead, use your scissor and cut from the fold all the way to the next fold. You don't want to continue cutting all the way through or you're going to end up with two long strips like in our accordion book. So now you should have one that looks kind of like mine. I recommend folding it in opposite directions to really make it nice and flexible. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead fold it in half with this new cut. Once we do that, it's gonna want to fall into this kind of accordion style shape. You actually wanna prod your hand and be able to pop this fold out so you can get almost like this small square in the center. Once you go ahead and have that square, you can go ahead and pinch both edges or both ends of your book, start to pinch them together. So you can start to slowly create almost like a T or an X. At this point, I go ahead and I'm gonna grab that X and I'm gonna flatten my book on the table or on a surface. And then I'm gonna one by one slowly go folding my pages and then recreasing them. When you get to this last page, which is your front cover, you're gonna have to really realign those corners and fold, fold, fold. This is probably gonna be your toughest fold since you're folding over all the other remaining pages of your book. Afterwards, you'll see though that you have a nice, small, handy book using just one simple cut. If you didn't have a scissor to make your cut, it's all right, it's okay. You can fold it half this way and then with nice 
nice delicate ease, you can slowly tear off that crease. Again, the more flexible the page is, the easier of a tear you'll get. And make sure not to come cut all the way through. You can go ahead and start experimenting with different papers to create different styles of books. Maybe you want some books to be poem books. Other books can be comic books. But just remember, we want you to tell your story. And it's so important that you make sure that your voice is heard and that your experiences are honored. I'm proud to be part of MCC's Live to You virtual programming to offer you cultural arts at your fingertips. This series is where community and culture converge in a socially distant, free way to connect with the arts. MCC is staying connected virtually with creative, educational, and inspiring cultural programming for everyone. See their monthly schedule and be sure to subscribe to their YouTube channel at Miramar Cultural. Watch the schedule, keep up with the videos, or at your own leisure. Be sure to tag them when you post your amazing artwork. We look forward to seeing it.